In this video, we're going to create the columns and slabs. If you look at the imported image, you'll see there are several columns in the Paris Ballroom. We will use the Create Wall Projection command in the Spotlight menu to create these six columns. Zoom in on the bottom left corner of the Paris Ballroom. Activate the Rectangle tool. Make sure the Corner to Corner mode is active. Move your mouse over the right edge of the left wall and align it with the top left corner of the first column. Click once to start the rectangle. Move your cursor down to the bottom right corner of the column and click a second time to complete the rectangle. So now we're going to use the control and drag or option click and drag method to duplicate this rectangle and place it over the other two columns on this wall. Activate the selection tool and enable the disabled interactive scaling mode in the toolbar. Click yes to confirm the mode change. This will disable the blue reshape handles and allow us to more easily move the rectangle without accidentally reshaping it. Move your cursor over the top left corner of the rectangle. Click and drag the rectangle up to the next column. Align the rectangle with the right edge of the wall and the top left of the column. Before you release the mouse button to place this rectangle, press and hold the Control key on Windows or the Option key on Mac. You will see a small plus sign appear above the cursor. This indicates that we are going to place a copy of the rectangle. Release the mouse button and then release the Control or Option key. This will place a duplicate of the rectangle. You will want to confirm that the rectangle was copied and not just moved. You should have two rectangles one over the bottom left column, and one over the middle column. Now repeat this action for the last column on this wall. With the selection tool still active, go ahead and re-enable the single object interactive scaling mode in the toolbar. Next, we're going to use the mirror tool from the basic palette to duplicate these rectangles to the opposite wall. With the selection tool still active, hold the shift key and select all three rectangles. Activate the mirror tool and enable the duplicate mode in the toolbar. Place the cursor at the midpoint of the top wall of the ballroom. When the midpoint smart cursor cue appears, click once and move your cursor down vertically. You will see a preview of the three rectangles on the opposite wall. Click once more to mirror and duplicate the rectangles. Now let's convert these rectangles into wall projections. Using the selection tool, select the three rectangles on the left side and the wall. Go to Spotlight, then down to Architectural, and choose Create Wall Projection. In the Create Wall Feature Projection dialog, check the option to use Object 3D Attributes and click OK. Repeat this procedure for the other three rectangles and the wall on the right side. Now let's take a look at these columns in 3D. Switch to a right isometric view and render an OpenGL. Activate the flyover tool in the basic palette and dismiss the Did You Know dialog box if it appears. Click once in the center of the ballroom to set the center of rotation. Then click and drag left or right to rotate around the room you will see the 2D rectangles we drew are now 3D columns. Switch back to a top plan view. Now let's create the two interior columns. We're going to use the column tool from the building shell tool set to create these two interior columns in the Paris ballroom. Let's start by creating a new columns class. In the view bar, click on the active class pop-up menu and choose new class. Name the class columns and click OK. Click on the Active Class pop-up again and choose the New Columns class to make it the Active Class. In the Toolsets palette, select the Building Shell toolset and activate the Column tool. In the Toolbar, click on the Preferences button. First, set the height to 20 feet. Adjust the shaft width and depth to 2 feet 10 inches. Next, set the capital width and height to 3 feet 2 inches. Now set the base width and depth to 3 feet 2 inches as well. Click OK to save these settings. 
Center your cursor over the bottom left interior column and click once to set the insertion point. Move your cursor to the right or left horizontally and click once more to set the rotation and place the column. Now we're going to use a smart point to align and place the second interior column. Move your cursor over the center of the column we just placed. After a few seconds, a red square will appear. This is a smart point. Now move your cursor to the right. A dotted red extension line will appear. When your cursor is aligned with the center of the right interior column and the extension line, click once to set the insertion point and a second time to set the rotation. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the columns in a 3D view. Again, switch to a right isometric view and render an OpenGL. You can see the columns appear in 3D at their set height. You can use the flyover tool in the basic palette to rotate around the objects as well. Finally, let's create the floors for our two rooms. We will be using the slab tool found in the building shell tool set. Switch back to a top plan view, zoom out, until you can see both the ballroom and the foyer. To make the walls easier to see, set the scan design layer to invisible in the navigation palette. In the building shell tool set, activate the slab tool, make sure picked walls mode is enabled in the toolbar, and move your cursor over one of the ballroom walls. When the wall highlights in red, click once to select it. Repeat this action for the other three walls of the ballroom all of the walls should be shown with a red highlight when selected. In the toolbar, click the green checkmark button. This will create the slab. Repeat these actions for the foyer. Now we have two slabs, one for the ballroom and one for the foyer. However, the slabs are showing above the columns and doors. This is because they are stacked above these objects. We need to use the send command to send the slabs to the back. Select both of the slabs, right click or control click on one of the slabs, and in the context menu, choose send and then send to back. As you can see, the columns and doors are now visible. Now let's put the slabs in their own class. With both of the slabs selected, go to the object info palette, click on the class pop-up menu, and choose new class. Name the class floor and click OK. Finally, switch back to a 3D view and render an OpenGL. Use the flyover tool to rotate around and review all of the objects we just created. Once you're done, switch back to a top plan view. 